George. What? If you had three wishes, what would you wish? I'd wish for three more of these. <laughs> very romantic, are you? I mean, no, I mean, don't you ever just, you know, want to get up and go? I would if I drunk three more of these, yeah. <laughs> travel. Oh, travel, yeah, yeah. I'd like to travel, yeah. Where do you want to travel to, then? Well, I'll give you a clue. Yeah. What is big and warm and friendly? Hey? <laughs> what is big and warm and friendly? You and Mrs, you mean? Or <laughs> Australia. Australia. Oh, that's right. That would be nice. That really would be nice. Do you believe wishes come true, then? No. <laughs> it was a try, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> George. Sid, you've still got two wishes left. <laughs> yeah. You'd better wish for a couple of cans of shark repellent. Hey. Quiet like that. Well, I don't want to waken anyone up. Oh, that's a good idea. Is yeah. this number 24 Mildew Terrace? No, this is 63 Puddle Duck Lane. Oh, well, that's near enough. <laughs> I've got this here parcel here for Mr. J O N E S. Mr. J O N E. Oh, Robinson, that's me. Oh, is it? Yes, I live here. Uh, hey, have you got any means of identification, like something addressed to you, like? Well, of course I have. That. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> will you go inside and I'll knock? Oh, wait a minute. I don't think anyone will answer. Why not? Because I live on my own. Oh. <laughs> that is except for my auntie, but she's in America. Oh, well, what are we going to do? Well, we just better wait till she comes back, I oh, think. Really? <laughs> Listen, while you're waiting, yeah. would it be a good idea, best idea, if I sat down there and twiddle my thumb? Yes, you can do that if you like. <laughs> the wife usually does mine. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my toes did half ache. Oh, I think I got the shoes on the wrong feet. Whose feet are they on, then? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's in London. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I meant to ask you this the other day, as a matter of fact. Was it you or your missus what was run over by a bus the other day? <laughs> when was that? <laughs> Last Tuesday. Yeah, that'll be the missus. <laughs> Where were you? Driving the bus. <laughs> Do you miss her? Well, I did Monday. I ran out of petrol. <laughs> did you hear what my wife called me last night? No. Well, that's funny. Her voice usually travels for miles. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's that paper that you got there? I don't know. I can't read. <laughs> I can. Give it here. Really? Oh, look. It says... Vicar posed as duck in blue movie with girl guides. You didn't read that? The vicar's just a friend of yours. No, he not no. He <laughs> says the vicar has three previous convictions and the duck had six. <laughs> <laughs> There's a funny thing happened to my brother, you know. What? On his wedding night, they locked the bride in the bathroom and dressed up a duck in the bridal gear. Oh, did he notice? Not until next Easter. <laughs> he gave her an egg and she sat on it. I can sympathise with her cos I'm short-sighted myself. Is that so? Yeah. <laughs> can you see as far as that cow over there? What, the near cow or the far cow? The near one. No. 
<laughs> I can't even see as far as me glasses, you know. Oh, uh, hey, I say something I've always wondered. Is Engelbert Humperdinck his real name? Is Engelbert Humperdinck whose real name? <laughs> Tom Jones. <laughs> Probably, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably. Listen, I want to ask you something. Yeah. It might be a bit more of a professional good voice for me. What What is the postage on that? Well, that, you see, it's according to the weight. Yeah. And that being lighter than air, that's minus 12 pence. <laughs> <laughs> what shape is that? Well, uh, we don't say on it. Looks like half a Dolly Parton to me. <laughs> <laughs> Which half? A small half. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't stand here. I'm in a tearing hurry. There we are. Okay. You have that. Your your shoes need mending. You want to get up to what's name? Cobblers. Oh well, I'm only trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> She was nothing but skin and bones. I knew a girl called Janie Scott. She had bumps where Jane had not. <laughs> I knew a girl called Susie Strong. Her feet were large and her legs were long. Her feet were so large that it was sad. She had to take her pants off over her head. <laughs> We're talking about girls, girls we've met. Ice is cold and water is wet. Up is up and fez is down. That's what makes the world go round. I knew a girl called Ruby Draws. Her ears stuck out like taxi doors. Tall as a pole and thin as a candle. Hard to please, but easy to handle. <laughs> Took her out in the wind and rain. She blew round like a weather vane. <laughs> By the fire, warm and snug, melted her upon the rug. <laughs> I'm talking about girls, girls I've known. Oats I've scattered, seeds I've sown. Up is up and down is out. You all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I knew a girl called Jennifer Gopher. She had hips like a well-stuffed sofa. If she sat on you, she'd squat you flat. Boy, I sure kept out of that. <laughs> she was buxom, big and round. Gave good value pound for pound. Like a mountaineer upon a climb, I conquered her a bit at a time. I'm talking about girls. Girls I've seen, face I've known, and place I've been, tales I've told, and songs I've sang. That's what makes the world go bang. <laughs> oh, I knew a girl called Big Tom Bella. Till I found out she was a fella. <laughs> With party friends and everything. But he never sent back the engagement ring. <laughs> I knew a girl called Topsy Turvy. She was cute and she was curvy. She was sweet and she was sunny. Now I'm paying her all the money. <laughs> We're talking about girls, girls we've known, birds that nested and have flown, black or white or pink or brown. That's what makes the world go round. Dimples in her cheeks, and the ribbons in her hair, and the rosebuds on her lips, and that lacy underwear. Oh, the dimples in her cheeks. <laughs> There's a girl who lives near me, pretty as a pin. Whenever I go by her place, she always lets me in. She's a gal without no brain. She's simple, so they say. But when I take her in the woods, she always knows the way. Oh, the dimples in her cheeks. And the sunburn on her knees. And the music in her voice. And she tries so hard. 
water, please. Oh, the sunburn on her knee. <laughs> when first we met, she was wearing pants and pushing an old iron plow. At first I thought she was a boy, but I don't think so now. Sometimes we go for buggy rides and other times we walk. I'd like to ask the gal her name, but we don't get time to talk. <laughs> oh, the dimples in her cheeks. Brother Jack, what a shame she married Jack. <laughs> and she loved my brother Jack. Yeah. And I must say, darling, it's an absolutely charming little restaurant you've chosen for us. I'm so glad you like it, darling. Mm. Such a pity you're on this damned walnut and celery diet. <laughs> I mean, I feel awful just, you know, making you sit there and watch me as I eat. It'll do wonders for my figure. Mm. Yes, you'll probably end up looking like two walnuts and a stick of celery. <laughs> 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 At least I'm allowed a glass of white wine. Indeed, yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's got a nice... It's the ambience they've been so... Um, we, um, so... Uh, the, uh... <laughs> just the... Just the one rather sort of trivial complaint I'd like to make is the... Uh, What's that? Well, the waiter seems to be hovering. Well, we are the last. He probably wants to go home. Eat up. Well, I'm not going to hurry, darling, am I? I mean, be fair, it's only the starters, isn't it? I mean, it does say outside that the restaurant is open till 12. It's only 20 past 11 now, you see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is that? I hadn't even started that. Don't make a fuss, I'm darling. not making a fuss, waiter. I mean, I've never known <laughs> something. <laughs> Sweet now. I haven't even started the main course. You do always tend to peck at your food. I do not peck now, darling. Please don't. Waiter, uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bill. I'm not paying for these. Don't make a scene. I'm not making a scene. I have not eaten them. I'm not paying. Well, them. it was your fault. My fault, you say? My fault. Well, I'm going to have some pudding, whatever happens. I'm going to ask to see the sweet trolley. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Waiter, please, could I see the sweet trolley? My fault. How dare you say that? <laughs> Look at that. Nothing on it. Well, thank goodness. I am on a diet. Well, I am not. I'm underweight for my height as it is. <laughs> I'm going to have two large portions of Black Forest Gatto, provided the acid rain hasn't denuded it. Oh, <laughs> You said this restaurant was in the good for I mean, it's just ridiculous. Darling, I, I think yeah. he wants you to raise your I'm, feet. Look, I'm not finished. Look, I'm sorry, I'm not finished. I will not be swept away. <laughs> Why do you always have to start rows in restaurants? Hmm? Yes, sir, I I'm thought sorry. I was going to enjoy myself yes, tonight. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I was a trifle overwrought and just a little bit sensitive. It's only that. <laughs> 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 what do you say? Thank you like that. Well, thank you. Why do you, why do you say it that way? That a bunk of a I'm trying you. to be polite. Unlike some people I could mention. Polite, dear. I am the customer. Let's yeah. understand. You that. are obsessed with that waiter. I'm not paying. Forget about the waiter. I, I pay no attention to the waiter. Don't you worry. I'm not. It's just that I'm not. <laughs> What's he doing now? I believe he's rolling up the car. You believe he's. Well, I'm going to call the manager. Well, you'll have to yell. He's in the south of France. Well, there must be somebody here in authority. I'm going to see them personally in the office. I mean, it's ludicrous. <laughs> I demand my rights. I shall complain. I shall take the whole matter to the NRMA. <laughs> I don't know why you're being so ridiculous. You don't know why I I'm being... I wish you'd shut up and stop making these stupid scenes. Shut up scenes. and stu Look, my dear, I can perfectly easily be calm, just as you are. And I will take it in such a calm way that you can... <laughs> <laughs> the chair now. That is it. We are going. Come on. I like it here. Well, I don't like it here. And... Oh, there's the bill. I see the bill. Don't worry. What is this? $89. $100 for the tip. There we are. I have never not eaten a meal. I haven't enjoyed less. Come on, darling, we're going home. I really don't see what you're so annoyed about. Well, you will soon. He's going to take your chair now. Look. <laughs> Excuse me, this is my fiancé. Priscilla, you can't go. Come here. 
No, thanks. I like it here. Oh, well, that's right. That is it. Finito. Caput. Priscilla, goodbye forever. Oh. Oh, I do hope he means it. Oh, Rodney, you were wonderful. I know. Where shall we go to dinner? Hmm? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Geraldine Turner. All I am is just a housewife. Nothing special, nothing great. What I do is kind of boring. If you'd rather... It can wait All I am is someone's mother All I am is someone's wife All of which seems unimportant All it is is just my life Do the laundry, wash the dishes Take the dog out, clean the house Shop for groceries, look for specials but it sounds so Mickey Mouse Drop the kids off, pick the shirts up Try to lose weight, try again Keep the troops fed, pick their things up Lose your patience, count to All I am is just a housewife Just a housewife, nothing great What I do So the TV talk shows tell me every night I don't mean to complain at all But they make you feel like you're two feet tall When you're just a wife, just a house Nowadays all the magazines make a bunch of beans out of family life You're aware if you go to work But you're just a jerk if you say you won't Just a house Women's lips as they think it's fine if the choice is mine Greetings. I am one long pong. <laughs> Land master of a uh, Georgia so. <laughs> Bless me. <laughs> me, me champion, me hold black belt. If belt breaks, also hold black braces. <laughs> Otherwise, trousers fall down and everyone see black wife fronts. <laughs> and say, ah, so. <laughs> him, him big in martial art. <laughs> me expert at karate means empty hand like Scotsman on flag day. <laughs> See, hands and feet of one long pong are reefer weapons, especially feet, because me never change socks. <laughs> A good feet in water makes them soft. Also, sleep with feet out of window. 
wife insists. <laughs> That's why me second Dan, sometimes called Dan Dan, a dirty old man. <laughs> always fight clean, love all sport, kendo, kung fu, judo, ludo, and cludo. <laughs> and cracking conkers. Sometimes spend all night to do a workout on the mat with the missus. She come up me with big stick, I say, can do. She say, no can do, got headache. <laughs> her parents bind her feet to keep them small. Pity they forgot her mouth. <laughs> Never mind, now I demonstrate. Yes, <laughs> Him hold his walnuts in his hand. <laughs> you watch me smash nuts. Him sing high song. Shell talk. One long pong now try to break records. That's very tricky, but it's very good and very popular with music lovers. Because <laughs> they come all records. <laughs> now, you say, is this trick painful? No, 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 no. Only if you play the records. <laughs> this trick, this trick, very good for a headache. <laughs> if you've not got one, you soon will have. <laughs> 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 Odd job, do props all wrong, make me look proper Charlie. <laughs> now let me show you best floor in judo. Floor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this floor, she got two very good holes. <laughs> she put me on my back many times. Also, plenty good at judo. <laughs> now, me come up behind her with this. Now this gave normal girl nasty shock. <laughs> but no flow. She just turned around and gave me two chops. Oh. <laughs> oh must have butchers down her tunic. Oh, 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 sweet and sour, eh? <laughs> Never mind. I go now and cook something else. Soya dumplings. <laughs> oh, I have a better idea. Me have another peak. <laughs> that one called Peking Duck. It says here there is no recession. All I can say is, if this isn't a recession, it must be the worst boom in history. <laughs> no, everybody's got more money than he used to have. I haven't. <laughs> I'm skint. Didn't you just have an uncle die? No. No, I got an auntie die. <laughs> Married to Fred. Oh, it was your auntie, was it? No, auntie didn't die. She's alive. It was Fred. He's dead. <laughs> Fred. Dead. <laughs> How much money did he leave now? Well, all of it. You have to, don't you? <laughs> but none of it to me. I am truly veracic. Well, like me. I haven't got two apenies to scratch the soles of my feet with. Well, I don't need money. I do. I do. I've asked for money. I've begged for money. I've cried for money. Well, why don't you work for him? <laughs> I'm going through the alphabet. I haven't got the W yet. <laughs> the doctor's ready, if you'd like to go through now, please. Oh, right. And here's your card. Oh. 
Not more paraphernalia. <laughs> Just through there, please. The doctor's waiting. All right. Then. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. Just come in and take a seat, would you please? In order to ensure a faster, more efficient service for our patients, this surgery has now become fully automated. Your medical examination will be carried out automatically by the machine in front of you. Oh, carried out automatically. I didn't realize Please that. insert your card now. Yes, right. Please insert your yes. card now. Please insert yes, all right. I'm going to. I'm going Please to. Please insert your yes, card right. now. That way up, presumably. There we are. You have now inserted your card. Yes. This will enable the computer to locate accurately your own name and personal details. Right. Oh. Good morning, Mrs. Ethel Dimchurch of Ten Church. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, there has been a mistake. Your surgical corsets are now ready for fitting. <laughs> Please strip down to your bra and panties. No, I'm sorry, this is an error. Error. Would I pass the error button, I suppose? Wait a minute, there you are. That's it. Yes. You have just made an error. <laughs> Please remove your card and insert again, this time the right way up. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Damn machines, I can never get the hang of them. Sorry, there we are. Good morning. Good morning. You are Mr. George Herbert Stickleback. That is correct, yes. Two Green Acres. Yes, that's right. And what is your address? <laughs> that is my address. Correction, Green Acres is not a complaint, it's an address. That's right. Now, Mr. Stickleback, mm -hmm. what seems to be the problem? Well, Doctor, recently I've been getting rather a lot of... Is it A, I... I think my old troubles come back again but don't tell the wife? <laughs> B, nobody knows what it's like to live with my feet? <laughs> C, I haven't been able to ride a bike since the operation? <laughs> or D, none of these? Please press one of the buttons in front of you. Um, it is D. Please state when you first noticed your complaint. Um, in Woolworths last Saturday. <laughs> and whereabouts did you get the pain? In the sports department. <laughs> Was it A, in the head, B, in the chest, C, in the stomach, or D, in the sports department? <laughs> it was a, it was in the head. The pain was in the head. I got this dizzy, wobbly feeling, you Do see. Do you ever experience a general feeling of wobbliness? A, yes, or B, no? Uh, yes, A, yes, I do. Wobbly dizziness, you know. There are several possible causes of wobbliness. Please state the number of legs. Uh, <laughs> two the last time I looked. <laughs> oh, sorry, you want it on the machine, sorry. Wait, there we are. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's wrong, sorry. There we are. <laughs> you appear to have 12 legs. Are you A, the Joy Boys? B, the Democratic Party? C, three teams of one legged polo players? Or D, was this a mistake? D, it was certainly a mistake coming to this surgery, I'm afraid. <laughs> Do you ever have problems with any of the following? A, a bleeding nose. B, getting up every morning. C, Brian Bury. <laughs> or A, B and C, Brian Bury getting up your bleeding nose every morning. <laughs> Excuse me, is it necessary to answer all these questions? <laughs> We are now ready for the physical examination. Yes. Please undress down to A, your vest, and B, your underpants, as shown in this diagram. Goodness me. <laughs> I think I know what underpants and vests look like, honestly. These damn machines treat you as though you're morons sometimes, really. I mean, don't know what this health service is coming to. You think we're all absolutely simpletons who didn't know. <laughs> Now, yes. to test your heart, pick up the large stethoscope on the table beside you. Yes. Attach it to the sockets on either side of the television set. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now place the end against your chest and yeah. breathe in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out. <laughs> Oh, the, the damn thing's gone on the blink now.
That completes your examination. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. You have a septic pimple on your right buttock, Sir Harold. <laughs> Try sitting on the left one just to be on the safe side. <laughs> No, Mrs. Bloomstein, for the last time I will not marry your daughter. Now get her out of my surgery. Oh, the whole thing's got complete. Look, look, I demand to see the proper doctor, do you understand? I know my rights carrying on with this damn carnival. I want to see the proper doctor in here personally, do you understand? <laughs> Congratulations. I am happy to tell you, Mr. Stickleback, that you are four months pregnant. Thank you very much. <laughs> tonight, tonight I am thrilled to announce that my new LP, Ronnie Corbett, live at the Salvation Army Soup Kitchen, <laughs> Blacktown's premier night spot, has just, the record, has just gone Tupperware. <laughs> yes, I'm very pleased, thank you. We, and we, now, we haven't had all the figures in yet, to be honest, but early estimates from the record shops up and down the country suggest that sales of the new album may already have topped somewhere in the region of you know, six copies. <laughs> Completely shattering my previous record, <laughs> which is something else people have been doing. <laughs> no, it's, a it's a remarkable success story, really, when you consider that this new LP isn't even out yet. It will actually be released tomorrow, and the man who produced it will be released next week. <laughs> and no expense has been spared. I mean, they have been so good. I mean, they have commissioned Patrick Litchfield to take a special photo of me for the front cover. Now, naturally, I had a few reservations, you know, about this, because, let's face it, he does have a slight tendency to flatter his subjects, iron out the wrinkles and make people look, you know, a little bit more glamorous than they really are. And I said, sorry, I do not want that on my photo. No camera tricks, no soft lighting, special photos. Just show me exactly as I really am. And I'm pleased to say that is exactly what he did. And it is... <laughs> <laughs> No, be honest, I think he has caught me there, don't you think? <laughs> Do I hear sniggers of derision? No, this, this record is actually something rather special for me because it contains all the funniest jokes I have told in 30 years of show business. And it's... <laughs> I've heard of compact discs, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> now, this record is very, very popular in Yugoslavia. <laughs> where they use it in the parking meters. <laughs> Incidentally, I shall be giving away a free copy of this LP to everyone who laughs. At <laughs> and uh, if you don't laugh, you get two free copies. <laughs> so you've been warned. No, this, now this story was actually told to me the other night in the pub by our local priest. Now, he had just popped in to give the last rites to the beer. And he gets in there quite a lot, the priest. He sort of integrates with his flock, you know. So sometimes I think he carries it a bit too far. Last night at closing time, he was giving us all absolution and he fell off the counter. And then he got a bit hysterical and excommunicated the landlord's dog. And then he spake unto me. He said... He spake unto me, he said, I don't... He said, I don't know why you're laughing. I don't know why I'm laughing myself. He said, I don't know why you're laughing, he said to me. You still haven't paid for your grandmother's funeral. And he said, if you don't give me the cash tomorrow, he said, up she comes. I went along there to the pub. And the landlady was just about to give me my usual. Then her husband walked in and that was me. <laughs> it was a bit of an evening, actually, because at one point there was a terrific panic, terrible panic. The whole pub had to be evacuated after a tip-off that someone had planted a Des O'Connor single in the jukebox. <laughs> Added to which, the local MP had had a bit of a skinful and ended up losing his seat in the gents. 
traditionally a Labour stronghold. So, <laughs> he, no, this pub was a funny old place. You used to get a real motley crowd in this pub. You know, you'd get cigarette smokers and aspirin pushers and <laughs> sprinkling of centipod drinkers on the run. <laughs> and the heavy mob from Weight Watchers. <laughs> and if you were well known, you could sometimes buy a hot knitting pattern or <laughs> a packet of saucy brass rubbings. <laughs> I remember they used to have a gambling room upstairs. This gambling room was so short of equipment. Good heavens, I saw a chap call Lay Down Misere on the two, three, and four of clubs, three beer mats, two rye beaters, and a Marley tire. <laughs> anyway, I got chatting to our priest, you see. Now, he's actually a very big improvement on the old priest who left recently under rather embarrassing circumstances. He was not only defrocked, but he also had his handbag confiscated. <laughs> anyway, while we were there chatting, he told me this very funny story, which I know you're all dying to hear. And, uh, you know, I can tell you, in fact, the audience in this studio have been glued to the seats for an hour now. <laughs> Serves them right for trying to leave early. <laughs> and here is the story about a young lady who goes to America to be honest, I've been, I've been quite a bit globetrotting this year myself because um, in the summer we went on a cruise. Well, I say we signed up actually for a cruise, a cruise on the QE2, but they put us in the annex. <laughs> <laughs> the annex was six weeks in a dredger off Port Macquarie. <laughs> Actually, it's supposed to be the maiden voyage of this cruise ship, and it was so badly designed, somebody pulled the chain in the gents' washroom and it flushed itself to the bottom. <laughs> the only thing left above the waves was the inflatable anchor. <laughs> Back to this young lady. Now, this young lady is about to go to America. Now, unfortunately, she is somewhat penurious condition, and she's skinned. So she decides she will stow away to America. Stow away, you see, America, on a boat. And she, it's the best thing to stow away on. So she promptly goes down to the docks and she secretes herself, hides that means. <laughs> <laughs> Only just found out myself, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> something to do with sticking herself. She secretes herself inside. Now that I've found it, I'll use it quite a lot. <laughs> she secretes herself inside. A crate of herrings, you see. <laughs> now, conditions are a bit cramped and uncomfortable because the herrings are travelling second class. <laughs> the richer herrings are all going first class. <laughs> They're all upstairs in luxury cabins, you know, with TV and little fridges full of duty-free worms. <laughs> but these are going second class, you see. So she gets inside this box secretes herself <laughs> and, and in this box and is loaded onto the ship and in two hours later she's off and so would you be in a great way <laughs> well we pick up the story again a fortnight later and the girl has just been discovered and is marched into the captain who looks up from his crow's nest soup and he says, <laughs> he says do you mean to tell me you have been stowed away on this boat for two whole weeks where have you been all this time Girl said, well, I'm good, quite good, that bit of acting. Wasn't it? <laughs> she, the girl said, well, you, you, may know, you may know the truth, she said. On my first day on this boat, the second officer found me, and he took me along to his cabin, and every day for the last fortnight, he has hid me in there. He has given me hot meals, let me use his bath, warm bath, the shower, very generously let me sleep in his bed. It's enough of that, please. <laughs> I see, said the captain. And was that all he did? Well, the girl takes on a crimson sort of hue. She said, well, I, mu I, must, I must be honest, I must admit, he has been taking advantage of me. The captain said, taking advantage of you? I'll say he has, he said. This is the manly fairy. <laughs> Hey, 
Hamish. Peter, Peter Hamish. Oh, you two have got so much in common. <laughs> I think I'll just go and do my hair. <laughs> Hamish, did Valerie say? Uh huh. Scottish? That's right, yes, uh, yes. Not Irish? No, 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 no. Oh, pity. Uh, pity in what way? Well, Irish is rhyming slang, you know. Oh? Huh. Irish jig. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know rhyming slang. No, no. I don't use it a lot myself, you know, I'm not a, not a cockney. I'm from Barnet. <laughs> Sorry, what's so Barnet, funny about Barnet? Barnet, well, Barnet. Barnet Fair. Barnet Fair. <laughs> well, so what? What, what well, about Barnet, Barnet Fair? Barnet, Barnet. Uh, Barnet is, is Valerie's maiden name, and, uh, and she's fair. She's not at all fair. She's a brunette. Ah, well, she's, uh, she's blonde underneath. Oh. <laughs> I'm be aware of that. Tell me, what uh, part of Scotland do you come from? I mean, what town? Uh, Ayr, by any chance? Ayr? Why do you say Ayr? What, what's so special about well, Ayr? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I'd just rather... <laughs> Rather nice town here, you know. <laughs> Does grow on you, doesn't it? <laughs> I do not come from air. I come from somewhere quite different. Oh, where? I come from Wigton in Wigtonshire. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Wigton is it? it's on the River Wig. It's a very, very thriving town, a very nice town. My company well, happens... Well, what is your company? Well, I'm... To? I'm a rug maker. <laughs> I make rugs. I don't see what there's to laugh about. Very necessary things, rugs. What do you do? Something vital, I suppose. Something wild important, do you? I work for British Aerospace. Mm. Hmm. In the wind tunnel. <laughs> you what? In the wind tunnel I work. Yes, I move in there and move the little aeroplane about. You know, oh, I, I don't believe yes, you. I do, yes. What, with the wind blowing? Yes. Oh, doesn't it t tend to interfere with things at all? No, not at all. Oh, doesn't it tend to blow things away? No, oh, not really. Come off it. Your glue can't be that strong. <laughs> what are you talking about? What, what am I talking about? Why are your face facts, man? You're wearing a wig. I am not wearing you? a wig. It's a terrible wig. It's one of the worst wigs I've ever seen. It looks like a doormat. <laughs> I am not wearing a wig. You're the one who's wearing the wig. I deny that. That is one of the worst wigs I have ever seen. It is like a mat. You, well, yours looks like a ginger cow pat. <laughs> <laughs> I shall pull yours off. Well, I'll shove yours down the lavvy, mate. That's what I'll do with you. Come on, lads, break it up. Keep your hair on. Oh, sure. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And yet the races is such an oasis of pleasure and frolicsome fun. We pick out the frillies and there are some of frillies parading around in the sun. We visit the best of the British race courses, but we don't waste time on inspecting the horses. There's more fun. Oh, there's a nice one. Oh, the one with her skirt blown aloft. <laughs> <laughs> she looks good all round, so whatever the ground, the going is bound to be soft. <laughs> I said to her mother once, do you care to go flat racing? She said, certainly. Your flat or mine? <laughs> I lay six to four, she's been hunting before. Yes. Don't her withers and fetlocks look trim. <laughs> don't get too cocky, she's here with her jockey. I must say, I don't fancy him. <laughs> with that nose and that chin, he looks non compassmentous I'm sure she's aware that he's just an apprentice. Ah, too true, but there's others on you. Number three is wearing blinkers, I see. He's here with Lord Melding. I think he's a gelding. That leaves the field open for me. <laughs> I think I'll take my camera along, you know, in case she fancies a photo finish. <laughs> <laughs> the one in the spots is Miss Caroline Potts. She's an 18-year-old and untried. <laughs> Been out once before. That's good, Heath. He'll play more, and they say she's a promising ride. <laughs> She's parading. My God, she looks stunning. I saw her at Windsor. She looks full of running and... <laughs> my God, goes well for a lad, though her breeding's not really top draw. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Potts. Right. By her dad. No, not quite. We all think it's the bookie next door. <laughs> <laughs> I once spent the night with her Aunt Susan, you remember? Slept, you mean? Not a wink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one in the blinkers. 
is old Henry Tinker's young maiden. She goes very fast. <laughs> She's quite a nice filly. Until she gets silly, yeah. then always falls flat on the last. <laughs> can't hold her back when she goes. You can't stop her. A real racing certainty. She'll come a cropper. Her name's Pam. Takes after her dam. Good breeding. It's all in the blood. <laughs> I once knew her mother in somewhere or other. My George, she went well in the mud. <laughs> the wife caught me, you know, with a young filly behind the hedge at Beecher's Brook. Took me to court over it. What happened? I asked for seven other fences to be taken into consideration. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at that cutie. A thoroughbred beauty. She must be the favourite, it's plain. Yes. Her form, it looks great. Just a bit overweight. Look, her breastplate is feeling the strain. <laughs> She's too much to carry. Oh, I wouldn't say that, sir. Well, you wouldn't describe her as one for the flat spot. I say, chaps, She's adjusting her straps, and she's hanging a bit to the right. <laughs> she started to cough. Good Lord, are they off? No, no, but they will be tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have time for this week. Next week, here in the studio, will be the world's greatest inverted snob. He stands on his head so he can look up his nose at people. <laughs> we'll also be talking to the Queensland parson who is accused of misconduct with his housekeeper after they found his vest in her pantry and her pants in his vestry. <laughs> and, then, and then I shall be looking at three landscape paintings. Paris, seen through the eyes of a Paris artist. Madrid, through the eyes of a Madrid artist and Pisa through the eyes of Dean Martin. <laughs> and I'll be telling you the desperately sad story of Willis Watkins, who yesterday was within a hair's breadth of achieving his lifelong ambition to play professional football, but then at the last minute signed with Cronulla. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, it's good night from me. And it's good day from Cronulla. Good day. Good day.